Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be solving lab number 13 titled Blind SQL Injection with Time Delays. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a blind SQL injection vulnerability. The application uses a tracking cookie for analytics and performs a SQL query containing the value of the submitted cookie. Okay, so the vulnerable parameter over here is the tracking cookie. Okay, so the results of the SQL query are not returned and the application does not respond any differently based on whether the query returns any rows or causes an error. Because the results of the SQL query are not returned, that means we can't use a union-based SQL injection. And because the application does not respond any differently based on whether the query returns any rows or causes an error, we can't use any of the blind SQL injection techniques that we've used in previous labs. Next, the exercise says, however, since the query is executed synchronously, it is possible to trigger conditional time delays to infer information. To solve the lab, exploit the SQL injection vulnerability to cause a 10 second delay. Okay, so we could use time-based SQL injection in order to exploit the SQL injection vulnerability. So we've got one end goal over here. And the end goal is to prove that the field is vulnerable to blind-based SQL injection. And it's time-based. All right, let's access the lab. And this might take some time. So we'll create our analysis section. We'll also open up Burp. Hit OK. Close that, select Next, start Burp. And we'll put that over here and make that a little bit smaller. And then we'll set Falxy proxy to send requests to Burp. So now when we hit home, it should be intercepted by Burp, which we can see over here. So let's send that to repeater and turn intercept to off and go back to repeater and move that over here. Okay, so our vulnerable parameter is the tracking ID over here. So we need to inject SQL code that causes a 10 second delay. And if we're able to cause that 10 second delay, that means this is vulnerable to a time-based blind SQL injection. Now to do that, we're gonna go back to the exercise and look at the hints section. Open up the cheat sheet and go down to the time-based queries. So over here, time delays. You can cause a time delay in the database when the query is processed. The following will cause an unconditional time delay of 10 seconds. So the reason we're looking at the cheat sheet is because we don't know which database we're dealing with. So what we're going to do is we're going to fuzz the application with all the different payloads and see which one it responds to. And then depending on the one it responds to, that means we're dealing with that database. So let's start off with the end by first trying out a MySQL database. So we'll put that over here. Now, in order to properly exploit this, we can't simply add this to the tracking ID. Instead, we'll have to add a single quote, which closes the single quote that this string was in. And then we'll add the concatenate clause to concatenate this query over here. And we'll add curly braces to the query. So let's see if this works. Control U to URL encode it, hit send, and we immediately get the response. So it definitely didn't sleep 10 seconds because even when we don't put that, you'll see that the time it took. So we removed a little bit too much. So Control U to URL encode it. Let's just test this again. Here we go. So it takes 136 milliseconds. And then when we remove it, hit send, it takes 131 milliseconds. So it definitely didn't take 10 seconds. 
and which means that it didn't interpret this as SQL code, which means that it's likely either that we use the incorrect syntax or this is not the database that we're dealing with. So I'll just put an X sign beside this one. So maybe it's not a MySQL database. Let's try a different database. So let's try PostgreSQL next. And again, we got to format it correctly so that it doesn't break the backend query. Let's copy that, put it into burp, control U to URL encode it, hit send. And it looks like it still doesn't sleep 10 seconds. However, I'm noticing right now that we did something incorrectly over here. So what's happening is that the query is likely something similar to this. So select tracking ID from tracking table, where tracking ID is equal to this tracking ID over here. So in order to properly inject our SQL payload into this, what we're doing is we're closing off the single quote over here, and then we're adding our payload. Now, the problem with this is that we still have a single quote that is unclosed, and then we've got the semicolon. So what we need to do is comment out the rest of the query, and this way this ends up being a valid query. So we did that incorrectly over here, and that might be the reason it didn't work. So let's try that out. So control U to URL encode it, hit send, and we get the request almost immediately. And so this is still an X, it's not a MySQL database. Now let's try with PostgreSQL. Again, don't forget to comment out the rest of the query. Control U to URL encode it, hit send. And here we go. So we can definitely see there is a delay in the response and it should be a 10 second delay. So this is definitely vulnerable to a blind based SQL injection. The 260 milliseconds is the original request and then the 10,000 milliseconds, which is 10 seconds, is the delay that we cause in our SQL payload. So this is definitely vulnerable to SQL injection. And if we go back to the exercise, it should tell us that we've solved the lab. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.